Good afternoon, everyone. Perhaps we can uh, begin our proceedings. Good afternoon, uh, Excellencies, uh, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, and all colleagues uh, participating today in person and also virtually. Uh, welcome to the side event on labor mobility and human rights, improving labor migration governance for migrant workers in the Middle East, co-organized by the governments of the Philippines, the Kingdom of Bahrain, and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia at the sidelines of the International Migration Review Forum. I am Ambassador Enrique Manalo, the permanent representative of the Philippines to the United Nations in New York, and I have the pleasure uh, in moderating this side event. I also wish to thank on my right the Secretary of Foreign Affairs of the Philippines, His Excellency Teodoro L. Loxin, Jr., for joining us uh, in person this afternoon. Before beginning uh, with the substance of our discussion, I would also like to request everyone joining us on Zoom to please mute your microphones so that we can have an orderly conduct for the event. Our speakers uh, joining us virtually, virtually will be requested to unmute their microphones when it is their time to speak. We hope to have enough time also for interventions and comments later. And time permitting, we may also uh, give an opportunity to those joining virtually to give their interventions, inputs, or comments. Distinguished guests, international cooperation is one of the guiding principles of the Global Compact for Safe, Orderly, and Regular Migration. Without international cooperation, none of the objectives of GCM will be realized. Close partnership between countries of origin, such as the Philippines, and countries of des destination, such as Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, could improve labor migration governments and impact migrants on the ground. In the Middle East, Saudi Arabia hosts the biggest number of migrant workers, most of them coming from South Asia and Southeast Asia. Meanwhile, Bahrain hosts almost a million international migrants and is also one of the major countries of destination in the region. Both countries have started implementing reforms in mobility of migrant workers. The Philippines has over two million migrants in the Middle East, Bahrain and Saudi Arabia as countries of destination and the Philippines as a country of origin share the same goal of holding migrant workers' rights. Now this side event aims to highlight the strong partnership between the three co-organizing countries and show how the objectives of the GCM on fair and ethical recruitment and decent work, on availability of pathways for regular migration, and on international cooperation and global partnerships influence labor migration governance and reforms. As I mentioned, I'm joined today by the Philippine Secretary of Foreign Affairs, His Excellency Teodoro L. Loxin, Jr., who will deliver the opening remarks. His Excellency Jamal Fares al a permanent representative of Bahrain to the United Nations, who will also deliver the um, opening remarks uh, of His Excellency Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid al Zayani, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of Bahrain and His Excellency Mohammed Al-Atik, Chargé d'Affaires of the Mission of Saudi Arabia to the United Nations in New York, will also speak. I'm also joined by a very distinguished panel. Uh, Her Excellency Sarah Lou Ariola, the Under Secretary for Migrant Workers Affairs of the Philippines. His Excellency Satam Al-Raharbi, Deputy Minister, Ministry of Human Resources and Social Development of Saudi Arabia. His Excellency <coughs> Duaj Khalifa al Binali, Senior Advisor of the Labor Market Regulatory Authority and Secretary of the National Committee for Combating Trafficking in, in Persons of Bahrain. The Honorable Maria Nanette Motus, Regional Director, the Asia Pacific of the International Organization for Migration. And the Honorable Mohammed El Zarkani, Resident Coordinator and IOM Chief of the Mission in Bahrain. It is now my honor to invite uh, His Excellency Secretary Theodore L. Loxian, Jr. to give his opening remarks. <coughs> Excellencies, honorable panelists, colleagues, the Philippines is honored to co-organize with the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia this event on improving labor migration governance for migrant workers in the Middle East. Bahrain is home to 50,000 Filipinos and Saudi Arabia is home to 865,000 Filipinos. Our partnership with Bahrain and Saudi Arabia 
exemplifies the international cooperation envisioned by the Global Compact for Migration. With the GCM as a platform, we have worked together to effectively reforms on the traditional sponsorship system, Kafala. They will benefit not only Filipinos, but other migrants as well. Since 2018, we have partnered with Bahrain to provide flexible pathways for workers' regular migration. Their flexible work permit helped regularize more than a thousand undocumented Filipinos. Jointly, we strengthened efforts to combat trafficking, creating specialized agencies, and convicting traffickers through the hard work and unfailing commitments of both our governments. We welcome Saudi Arabia's labor reform initiative that allows skilled migrant workers to travel, transfer, or leave their work without the consent of their employers, a freedom once limited by kafala. This complements other reforms, such as the wage protection system, digital documentation of work contract, and labor education and awareness initiatives. The Philippines awaits the extension of this reform to household service workers and those in elementary occupations. These developments were once aspirations, they are now reality. As a country of origin and a GCM champion country, the Philippines commends these progressive reforms that raise the standards of protection of migrants to the levels they deserve. Let these initiatives be a beacon for other countries to join in the common goal and responsibility of protecting migrants. I thank everyone for taking an interest in today's forum. Thank you. I thank Secretary Loxin for his remarks. I would now like to invite Ambassador Jamal Faris al Rawawi who will deliver the opening remarks of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Bahrain. Thank you, Ambassador Ubeki. Uh, uh, Excellency Teodoro Roxin, Junior Secretary of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Philippines. Excellency, distinguished guests, allow me to start by uh, conveying the regard and the best wishes of His Excellency Mr. Abdelkrim Fafafin Zayan. Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of Bahrain, who's, who, who could not be with us here today due to uh, official commitments. It's uh, therefore my honor to deliver the following statement by His Excellency. Excellencies, uh, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor to join you on the occasion of the first International Migration Review Forum for this forum on labor mobility and human rights proven labor migration governance for migrant workers in the Middle East. I'm uh, in particularly delighted to join esteemed excellencies from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the Republic of Philippines. Coming together like this, I believe, underscores the profound importance of the, of the thinking about migration holistically, bringing countries of origin and countries of destination together to discuss shared challenges and opportunities. Indeed, the partnership and, inter and the international cooperation is the very spirit of the global compact for safe, orderly, and regular migration. The Kingdom of Bahrain has been a strong supporter of the GCM since adoption, recognizing its pivotal role as the key international agreement on the migration governance. We remain as committed as ever to the implementation of all 23 GCM objectives as outlined in our voluntary national report submitted in 2020. And we look forward today to focusing in particular on three specific GCM objectives, namely objective five, enhancing availability and flexibility of pathways for regular migration. Objective six, facilitating fair and ethical recruitment and safeguarding conditions that ensure decent work. Objective 23, which is strengthening international cooperation and global partnership for safe, orderly, and regular migration. In Bahrain, we are mainstream 
the objective and indeed the principle of GCM into our national development plans as outlined in His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa Economic Vision 2030. To take just a couple of examples, one, during the last two years, we held a series of consultative workshops to support the development of a national action plan for human rights 2022. 2026. We work closely with the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights and the International Organization for Migration. For example, to organize a dedicated session to discuss labor rights, the first of a kind in the Gulf, the National Action Plan on Community, incorporate key recommendations from the government, civil societies, and international partners, including those that we have uh, supported through the Universal Periodic Review. Second, in addition, the government of Bahrain has also committed to strengthening partnership, uh, its partnership with the United Nations through the signing of the Strategic and Sustainable Development Cooperation Framework for 2021-2022. Cooperation Framework incorporates our collaborative approach to enhancing migration governments, governance and the human rights in range of areas, including ethical recruitment, decent work, and countering human trafficking. Excellencies, we in the Kingdom of Bahrain, as a country of destination, take the responsibility of protecting migrant labor very seriously. For decades, now Bahrain, and indeed the wider mm -hmm. region, have had a special relationship with the Philippines. We have worked and will work and will continue to work hand in hand to ensure that in the language of the GCM, uh, migration works for all. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you very much for your kind attention and wish you an engaging and dynamic discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador, for the remarks, and I also wish to convey our thanks to Minister Alzeani for, for the remarks. May I now invite uh, Mr. Mohamed al to deliver his remarks. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Ambassador Reki, and uh, I welcome His Excellency Mr. Theodore L. Loxing, Jr. Uh, Secretary of Foreign Affairs of the uh, Republic of the Philippines, uh, Excellencies, dis dis distinguished attend attendees, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, at the outset, allow me to start my remarks by expressing our sincere thanks and appreciation to the de delegation of the Philippines for their initiative in preparing and organizing this important event today. On the side of this very important forum, and in collaboration with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the Kingdom of Bahrain. I also would like to welcome the reputable speaker, speakers participating in this event from either countries of origin and destination or other stakeholders. We are looking forward towards listening to their valuable inputs on this matter. Ladies and gentlemen, there are over 100, uh, there are over 10 million of migrants workers from different nationalities live in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia participating effectively to the economy of the country and contributing and contributing in building its future. Therefore, the leadership of the kingdom have always made the rights of, of, of migrant workers as, as a, a priority in designing relevant national policies, particularly with the launch of Vision 2030 that recognizes the, contribu the contribution of the expat expatriates community at the heart of the economy and society and forms the cornerstone for all constructive national plans and initiatives that tar targeted the, the benefits of working migrants. During the recent years, Saudi Arabia ensured in a new era with historic labor reforms offering greater freedom to millions of migrants and expatriate workers. These remarkable reforms are part of the kingdom's efforts to build an attractive job, jobs markets for expats, work, for expat workers. Excellencies, 
the recent and accelerated crisis that the world witnesses every single day. For example, the COVID-19 pandemic has ex exacerbated the vulnerability of migrant workers, putting them at a greater risk either on, either on health, economic, or social aspects. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has introduced a number of policies on, on the national level and has also led regional and international initi initiatives to alleviate to alleviate the impact of, of this pandemic on migrant workers. Finally, the, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia values the importance of the exchange of views in addressing vital topics such as hum the human rights of migrant workers, especially between countries of origin and destination. We believe that such part practices can contribute effectively towards a stronger coordination for the sake of migrant workers. Thank you, Excellency. I wish to thank Mr. Alatik for his remarks. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we shall now move on to our final discussions. Uh, we hope to, uh, through these discussions, learn about the good practices that can help in the implementation of objectives 5, 6, and 23 of the Global Compact for Safe, Orderly, and Regular Migration. In this regard, I now uh, wish to invite Under Secretary Sara Lou Ariola to give uh, her statement uh, and presentation. Thank you very much, Government uh, Representative Manalo. His Excellency Tidora Luxin, Excellencies and Honorable Guests, good afternoon. As a country of origin, the Philippines has never seen this kind of international cooperation before. Partnering with major countries of destination in upholding the rights and welfare of migrants. The Global Compact for Safe, Orderly, and Regular Migration has indeed inspired states to raise the level of protection to all migrants, regardless of the status and nationality. We take note that together with the Philippines, all countries in the Gulf region adopted the GCM. This is not just a mere gesture of camaraderie and recognition of migrants' rights. This is the result of our strong advocacies and decades-long fight for migrant protection a driving force that can spark and sustain movements bigger than we ever imagined for ourselves. Among the pressing issues we strongly advocate is the reforming of the kafala system in the Middle East. With every discourse, every platform, and every opportunity given to us, we never fail to mention kafala and how it needs to be transformed. It is a traditional sponsorship system establishing an employee-employer relationship We heard the grave concerns of our migrant workers, particularly household service workers, who do not have the labor mobility and at the mercy of their employers, and no one can deny its negative impacts and unintended consequences to the workers. While kafala has since been customary, such traditions that discriminate and limit freedom should be shifted into a practice that is progressive and is founded on the lens of human rights. This is why it is of utmost importance to the Philippine government to push for migration policy innovations with the aim of enhancing pathways for regularization, facilitating fair and ethical recruitment and ensuring decent work for migrant workers. Today, I am proud to be part of this forum that will showcase a strong partnerships of Philippines with two countries in the Middle East, Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. About 850,000 Filipino migrants are in Saudi Arabia, while 50,000 are in Bahrain mostly consisting of household service workers and skilled employees. Allow me to share the fruits of our partnerships with these countries of destination. In 2017, the Labor Market Regulatory Authority of the Bahraini government launched the Flexible Work for Permit System. It started issuing flexible visas or flexi visas. This served as a ray of hope for many undocumented workers as they were provided a pathway to be regularized by sponsoring themselves and working on a freelance basis. The flexi visas also come with health insurance and a return ticket to those who wish to return home. Allowing this kind of mobility is an unprecedented step in reforming kafala. The Philippine government in invested at least 1.5 million US dollars to purchase flexi visas for over a thousand Filipino migrant workers. We are probably the only country that spends government funds to regularize its citizens. The Bahraini government has also exerted extraordinary efforts to combat trafficking in persons. 
they have established a specialized public prosecutor's office and high court for the conviction of complicit government officials for sex trafficking. A national committee called the National Committee for Combating Trafficking in Persons is also dedicated to prevent and fight trafficking. And in December last year, the LMRA launched the Regional Center for Excellence in the field of trafficking in persons as part of the UN Office of Drugs and Crime. These efforts to combat trafficking served the Philippine government well when it pursued a case involving Filipino nationals. The cooperation led to the landmark conviction in April 2020 by a Bahraini court. Eight individuals, seven Filipinos and one Bahraini were arrested, prosecuted, and convicted through the concerted efforts of our office, the Philippine Embassy in Bahrain, our Department of Justice, and an interagency council against trafficking. This is done with the LMRA, which facilitated the filing of the complaints of the two Filipino survivors. Thank you, Bahrain. On the other hand, the Ministry of Human Resources and Social Development of Saudi Arabia launched the Labor Reform Initiative in March 2021. The initiative seeks to increase the flexibility, effectiveness, and competitiveness of Saudi labor market in line with local labor laws and international best practices and standards. In the long run, this can significantly address the adverse effects of kafala to Filipino workers, particularly those who are being prevented by their employers to return to the Philippines or to seek better work opportunities despite contract completion. In a virtual forum organized by our office, even Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte referred to the initiative as a key move towards advancing human rights in the labor market in Saudi Arabia and improving the lives of Filipino workers. Thank you, Saudi Arabia. However, the reform still does not include household service workers, private drivers, guards, non-professional health care workers, and garden keepers. Since, hence, issues such as their non-inclusion were discussed during a forum by the Philippine Embassy in Riyadh. Among the issues also covered were the circumvention of the initiative by unscrupulous employers and the need to improve digital literacy among migrant workers. Continuous promotion of the welfare and human rights of migrant workers were also tackled in several bilateral meetings of the Philippines and Saudi Arabia. Last November, Saudi officials visited our embassy shelter to observe the situation and ultimately to gather best practices in shelter management, among others. My visit in December last year also prompted us to encourage Saudi recruitment agencies to support labor mobility and to review the necessity of fees. Excellencies and guests, all of these developments will not have been possible without the strong relations and collaborative efforts between the Philippines, Bahrain, and Saudi Arabia. While there is still a long road to realize and wholly implement the GCM, we wish to continue maintaining this momentum with our staunch partners. I commend the governments of Bahrain and Saudi Arabia for rendering the political will to push for such reforms. The Philippines assures you of its active involvement in achieving GCM Objective 5 to enhance pathways, Objective 6 to facilitate fair and ethical recruitment and ensure decent work, and Objective 23 to strengthen international cooperation. We once again thank Bahrain and Saudi Arabia for co-organizing this event. Maraming salamat po. Shukran jazilan. I thank Under Secretary Ariola for. I thank uh, Under Secretary Ariola for uh, her important remarks. I would now like to invite Deputy Minister Satam Alarbi to give his statement. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I would like to start by thanking the government of Philippines for the kind invitation to speak in this important session and I'm honored to be here. Five years ago, Saudi Arabia launched a roadmap to guide the kingdom to unique economic and social reform. That roadmap is Vision 2030, which launched to guide the kingdom to unique economic and social reform and which was a milestone in the history of Saudi Arabia. 
Fijian 2030 recognizes the, ex the contribution of expatriates community. Thus, this Fijian dedicated the three main goals of its strategy goals for expatriates, which actually reflect many of the GCM objectives. And these goals are improving life condition for expatriates, improving work condition, and attracting talent. As part of the global community, Saudi Arabia faces many challenges, same of the same challenges that are related to migration as the rest of the world. We are we share the responsibility to work in cooperation with our partner and the global community to find the best possible solution for these challenges. In this session, I will focus on the on these goals, on one of these goals, the Fijian 2030 goals, which improving the working condition for expatriates, which align directly with the GCM objective 5, 6, and 23. Regarding GCM objective 5, Saudi Arabia is committed to provide flexibility of pathway for migrants. With, uh, with this in mind, we implemented the, implemented the LRI, uh, LRI, which is Labor Reform Initiative. This reform has abolished the previous sponsorship system in many ways. One of these ways is granting the expatriates the right to easily change job without the employer consent during or after the contract. And this also put expatriates and citizens in one level regarding the uh, uh, governor's role and uh, labor treatment. In, in addition to this, expa uh, expats continue to have the rights to unconditional mobility option, including allowing employees to change jobs during the contract in cases of employer violations, uh, including violation, violation of, right, of wages or uh, not completing the contract, also in cases of family reunion to uphold the rights of family life. All of these policies fully automated and available in different languages. And last March 2020 marked the first anniversary of LRI, and there have been exceptional results. More than 70,000 expatriates have changed their employer based on these services without the consent of the employer. And also 60% of those employees who transferred their uh, jobs have joined a new employer with higher salaries. As part of the major reform, we have introduced policies to diversifying of pathways by launching the automatic final exit and re-entry visa. Now expatriate worker can travel without the employer consent by obtaining these services. Additionally, the government of Saudi Arabia has recently approved the labor market strategy. One of the main pillars of the labor market strategy is the admission strategy. The aim of this strategy is to enhance transparency and promote ethical and fair recruitment for expats, as well as promoting effective skill matching program with a program that has been approved recently, which is skill verification program. The admission strategy is also looking for to introduce new types of visa to accommodate the market needs and bring in more flexible option to attract skilled labor. This in addition to the current type of visa which are cu currently available like working visa, temporary visa, and seasonal visa, and business visits. Moreover, Saudi government introduced the res uh, introduced residencies visa programs which include two types of visa, unlimited duration premium residencies and limited uh, duration premium uh, residencies. Moving to GCM Objective 6, Saudi Arabia have given this subject a top priority and taking concrete steps to achieve decent work for all with six fundamental initiatives. The first one was wage protection system, which started in 2013 and completed by 2020 covering 100% of establishment and also covering the whole uh, labor market. In this program, the all employees receiving their wages under the super, supervision of the ministry through uh, bla uh, banking platforms and also with uh, a monitor from the ministry. This system is linked to uh, labor courts so that can resolve any uh, 
on the disputes of wages in a quick way. Also, the second program is labor contract authentication, which aims to ensure that each employee in Saudi Arabia have their contract authenticated and approved by the employee, uh, where it's linked also to employee where they receive their contract via SMS message and they have access to their uh, contract and review the subject, the content of the contract, and the ministry ensure that this contract is complied to labor law. The third initiative was the alternative dispute resolution, where we created a platform to resolve disputes online through a platform that bring in two uh, parties to solve the issue before it's escalated to the court. Recently, 73 of cases that has been submitted to this platform has been solved between two parties, avoiding uh, f without escalating this to the co labor court. Also, we give the education, and labor education, an important uh, uh, priority. Where we launched a lab labor education initiative, the, and also under this initiative, we created the national index for expats, which uh, indicate the, the, the expats uh, awareness level and with a gradual a KPI which, wa which is measured quarterly to increase and aim to increase the, the expats education and awareness uh, level. 50, more than 50 media campaign were launched recently in different languages with reach of more than 6 million people. The Saudi government introduced the insurance policy for workers. This insurance policy is fully funded by the government where it should ensure the employees, the expats employees' rights in case of employer insolvency uh, to protect their rights without any uh, contribution from either the employer or the employees. At the national policy level, we have developed three policies to further protect uh, workers' rights the national policy for occupation, health, and safety, the national policy for, to ban child labor, and now we are working in uh, developing a national policy to abolish forced labor. Through these policies, we, we, we continue to be proactive in safeguarding workers against unfair working condition, considering the global challenge of international migration issues, where there is no country can succeed alone, we believe it's very important to, for countries to, of destination and country of origin to align their national, and, uh, their national migration policies and efforts. This can be, ad have, can be addressed through, through multilateral and bilateral agreements. Saudi Arabia recently concluded more than 23 bilateral agreements with labor sending country also all these signed agreements are fully aligned with UN and ILO and IOM standards to ensure we have a human rights based relationship between employees and employers. Saudi Arabia remains committed to international conventions and we have recently ratified three ILO's convention and protocols that 2014 protocol uh, to the forced labor, the convention of C95 to protect wages, and convention C120 on hygiene and offices and commerce. Moreover, we believe in the importance of effective partnership and collaborative approach with all stakeholders, including national and international partners, embassies, NGOs, and private sector and, 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 and entities. We have ongoing dialogues with over 24 embassies from sending countries Last but not least, Saudi Arabia recently launched a program of labor attache, attache bro, uh, project to assign seven labor attache in labor and sending country, countries. This, the first outcome of this was the labor attache in Philippines, followed by labor attache in Egypt. This is only a brief snapshot of work that we are doing to improve labor migration governance for expats in Saudi Arabia through our partnership we continue working, doubling our effort, and seeking new solution to achieve safe migration and decent work for all. Thank you for your attention. I thank the Deputy Minister for his presentation.
I now invite the senior advisor, Duaj Khalifa Abinali, to give his statement. Excellencies, distinguished guests and colleagues. It's certainly a great honor to, and a privilege to be present with you all in this event on labor mobility and the human migration and the human rights taking place during the International Migration Review Forum, which brings together countries of destination, Saudi Arabia and Bahrain, along with the, a country of origin, the Philippines, and this important labor labor um, migration corridor. I would like also to ex express my thanks and gratitude to each and every one for the good efforts and excellent organization of this significant event. The government of Bahrain sees the IMRF in New York as a pivotal moment to take stock of the implementation of the GCM and its 23 objectives for the first time since their adoption in 2018. The reason why I'm here today is to discuss and focus on the main and related uh, objectives of, of GCM, which is Objective 5, on regular pathways, Objective 6, on fair and ethical recruitment, 10, on trafficking, and Objective 23, on international cooperation. It will include also recent developments related to labor migration governance reforms in the Kingdom of Bahrain and will also indicate some recent trends with regard to the protection of migrant workers from the Philippines. Just as a background, as of May 2022, there are nearly 50,000 migrant workers from the Philippines in Bahrain. The majority of them are females, which they are around 35,000. Approximately 26,000 are engaged in employment in the private sector and around 20,000 as domestic workers. The launch of the Flexi Permit in 2017 allowed the regularization of migrants and their registration without a specific employer, which it helped in the elimination of the kafala system. This was done in an effort to mitigate exploitation and ensure migrant worker rights and agency in choosing the type of work they engage in. There are approximately more than 1,000 active Filipino flexi holders, and the majority of them, which almost has uh, a weight of 70% of them, are sponsored by the Philippines Embassy in Bahrain which shows the, 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 the good collaboration and support between the two countries. During 2020 amnesty period that the government of Bahrain provided, migrant workers were exempted from fines, fees, and were allowed to obtain a flexi permit or a work permit without an employer. Bahrain government also launched a service based on the idea of a one-stop shop that was provided to the uh, work uh, permit uh, um, it was provided to, to all uh, business owners to grant the work permit. The service increases the flexibility in the procedure of issuing and renewing work permits for migrant workers within a period which not exceeding 48 hours. In Objective 6, the facilitating fa uh, fair and ethical employment, Bahrain leg legislation ensures equality between nationals and migrants, as stipulated in our labor law, which regulates the, re the relationship between the employer and the worker on various aspects within a framework of non-discrimination. Furthermore, Bahrain has become a member of the International Labor Organization and has acceded to a series of agreements on the right to work and working conditions, reaching a total of 10 agreements, including notably the Forced Labor Convention, the Convention Against Discrimination, and the Convention Against Child Labor. We have also put in place a policy to regulate the recruitment process, both for direct recruitment by employers and for licensed labor recruitment 
agencies. Other policy changes include prohibiting soliciting any amounts or obtaining any benefits or advantages from workers in exchange for issuing a work permit or to keeping their jobs. I will talk also about the objective 10, which is talking about prevention and control and elimination of human trafficking in the context of international migration. Bahrain has acceded to the United Nations Convention against transnational organized crime and the two protocols supplementing it, and has institutionalized combating, combating trafficking in person in an integrated system that includes relevant government bodies and entities and is based on prevention, protection, prosecution, and partnership. Establishing Expat Protection Center in 2015, which provides, which provides preventive and counseling services to migrant workers, in addition to sheltering services to victims and potential victims of trafficking, and as a testament to the confidence placed in, King in Kingdom of Bahrain initiatives, procedures and distinct services, the Republic of Philippines seized the sheltering services provided to their nationals in the kingdom since 2018, and instead relied on the sheltering services provided by LMRA, Expat Protection System, which we are proud of. Launching the National Referral Mechanism, NRM, for victims of trafficking in person, which covers identification of the victim, case documentation, case confirmation, providing protection and assistance, reintegration and voluntary return to the victim's country or any third country of their choice. Also establishing trafficking in person public prosecution and court dedicated to look into cases of trafficking in persons along with establishing Victims of Trafficking Assisting Fund to provide financial, financial support to victims and help their reintegration into society. In a spirit of a whole society approach, we are forging partnership with stakeholders such as civil, uh, civil society institution, embassies, and consulates, and non-governmental organization to raise migrant workers' awareness of their rights and obligations through various channels. Furthermore, in our bilateral relations, we are building collaboration with relevant entities of sending countries, including the Republic of Philippines, in the field of diplomacy, security, and justice to support victims and punish perpetrators with the aim of ensuring accountability and ending impunity. An example of such collaboration is a case that we are proud of it in our LMRA uh, entity. As an, an example of this collaboration, there were three Filipino victims where a report was received from the Republic of Philippines Embassy regarding the potential victimization of three Filipino nationals. Out of their own wish, they traveled back to Philippines, and the case was referred to TIP public prosecution, which after investigation declared them victims of trafficking while being in their country. In collaboration with the Republic of Philippines government, financial aid from the Victim of Trafficking Assistance Fund in Bahrain was delivered by hand to the victims in the Philippines by a Bahraini government official. According to the NRM data relating to the Filipino workers, Total of 3,598 cases during the period 2021 till end of last month, of which more than 2,800 were filed by females. Among those cases, there has been a total of 124 grievances against claims of absence of, from work and 229 cases of labor court cases and 188 cases of passport retention, which has been completed with, 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 uh, with the pride of, uh, from the LMRA that all was settled 
and completed with their uh, in, uh, in collaboration with the Embassy of Philippines. At the end, objective 23, which is talking about strengthening international cooperation and global partnerships for safe, orderly, and regular migration. Developing partnerships in, is an important part of Bahrain effort to implement the global compact on, on migration. These partnerships include financial and in-kind contributions to support refugees and migrants in various parts of the world has been made, such as Palestine, Syria, Pakistan, Somalia, Turkey, Nepal, and the Philippines. They also include building hospitals, schools, and other infrastructure. Bahrain has developed partnership with international organizations working on issues related to migration, recruitment, and trafficking to strengthen and build capacities according to the highest standards, such as partnership with the international organization of uh, with, such as partnerships with the International Organization of, for Migration (IOM) and the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime (UNODC). I would like to conclude my views with sincere thanks and appreciation on behalf of the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Labor Market Regulatory Authority, LMRA, to the organizers of the IMRF 2022 and organizer of the side event, and in addition to express my good wishes and sincere thank to my distinguished panelists and honorable guests of this global forum. Finally, I wish you all of you a very success in achieving the aspired goals and objectives of the Global Compact for Migration. And I wish you a good day, and God bless you. I thank the senior advisor for his uh, important remarks. I would now like to invite the IOM Regional Director, Maria Nanette Motus, to give her presentation. And she is joining us virtually. Regional Office for Asia and the Pacific and Greetings from Bangkok. Thank you to the government of the Philippines, to the Kingdom of Bahrain, and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for this opportunity and the privilege to be a reactor in the Joint Forum. I also appreciated the very enlightening interventions presented by our distinguished panelists. The high volume of deployment has, has been accompanied by various challenges, risks, and concerns faced by migrant workers. For example, uh, the Philippine Overseas Labor Offices in Al-Khabar, Jeddah, Riyadh, in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, as well as the one in Bahrain, continue to handle a high number of welfare cases relating to overseas Filipino workers. With a significant portion of women migrant workers involved in domestic and hospitality work, a closer monitoring of recruitment practices and feedback mechanisms is warranted to protect all governments of the Philippines and the kingdoms of Saudi Arabia and Bahrain to address the risks and vulnerabilities faced by migrant workers in addressing the documented issues which put migrant workers at risk of trafficking, labor exploitation, or other human rights abuses. Multiple available research show that evidence-informed inter-country cooperation is a critical step that urgently needs to be taken in order to address systemic barriers that hinder workers from accessing remedies for violations of their rights. In particular, access to justice to the legal systems of the host country is a need that has often been expressed and identified, but in most cases, still go unmet. In the context of deployment of OFWs to the OGCC countries, particularly the kingdoms of Saudi Arabia and Bahrain, it is our hope that continuing efforts to develop and enhance inclusive policies on labor mobility and human rights would pave the way towards better social protection for migrant workers in the host country, including by facilitating access to avenues of justice that are available in country. I would like to also acknowledge and congratulate the government of the Philippines on the establishment of the new Department of Migrant Workers, which incorporates the GCM objectives in its mandate. This is indeed one of the first countries to include GCM in its national legislation. 
Furthermore, the Philippines has recently launched two national action plans, one on fair and ethical recruitment and the other on sustainable gender responsive return and reintegration, which would ensure the operation, operationalization of some of these commitments. In closing, IOM welcomes this hybrid panel discussion on this topic, as it, this is much needed in the current context as the borders slowly open amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, which still is ongoing. With the reinvigoration of the migrant worker deployments from the Philippines during this period of social economic recovery, we hope it will result in good cooperation towards fair, transparent recruitment practices that is based on sound evidence and the importance of data, having migrant inclusive policies that will benefit all migrant workers and their families and the communities both at home and at countries of destination. Thank you very much. I thank Ms. Smotus for uh, her presentation and also to thank her and uh, express our appreciation that uh, she could join us despite the uh, 12 or 13 hour time difference. I now invite Mr. Mohammed El Sarkani, the IOM Chief of Mission in Bahrain to give his presentation and uh, he's also joining us virtually. Thank you very much. Sorry, we couldn't hear you for, for a few seconds or so. Um, so, Excellencies, uh, thank you very much for this invitation. I wish I was uh, physically there with you in person. But then again, I'm happy I didn't have to go through that very long uh, trip uh, across the Atlantic. So, but again, but thank you very much uh, for the kind invitation. Um, you know, coming to speak uh, uh, as a last speaker or reactor makes my job much easier because uh, you guys really said everything already, uh, but I uh, but I will uh, I will try to uh, capture a few points again, building on the very important uh, uh, points raised by my uh, colleague uh, uh, Dr. Ninette. Um, first of all, I want to see I want to say how delighted I am on behalf of uh, um, of IOM to see the progress of the relationship. Uh, that started with discussions, but has turned into a true partnership between um, uh, three uh, uh, key countries that have a very impor important voice when it comes to uh, migration governance. And um, I've, uh, I've, I've, I'm so delighted to have witnessed how this uh, partnership has, has grown uh, to really become what it is today. Uh, and I say it's a partnership because um, I know and I see that um, that uh, no one state is looking uh, at finding uh, solutions uh, to migration that is built in a silo. It's not possible. And uh, and uh, uh, history keeps uh, uh, teaching us this reality. Uh, but sometimes it's about putting it into practice. And I'm and I'm really very, very pleased um, to, to, to really see how this partnership and realization has grown. We always say, you know, smugglers, traffickers, they work cross borders, they don't see borders. That's the idea of it. Um, and, uh, uh, and it's very important for governments and other key stakeholders to, to be able to go beyond those invisible lines at times. So um, again, very, very delighted to see um, how uh, how this partnership has been has been forged uh, to be such a solid platform. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to speak about any any uh, um, uh, initiatives because I think the all all three governments have done a fantastic presentation of all the excellent progress that has been made. What I'm going to speak about is what we witness as also as a serious political will for reform. There is a serious political will. And I think this is why we're seeing as well this this really very very considerable um, uh, progress made across the board. 
and that for us is uh, is extremely key because um, we know that uh, political will is is a very key ingredient in any formula for success so across the board from countries of origin destination specifically three countries here we do see that um <clears throat> i want to say something as well is that there has been also an overarching um change to see uh, to move away and transform economy specifically in the in countries of destination and and Bahrain and, and Saudi Arabia are fantastic examples of that, in which the move away from labor intensive economy to one that is more capital intensive, built on innovation, built on technology. And for that environment to really flourish, you need to have uh, the policies uh, with it that allows for this transformation. Um, and, uh, and it is and, and what I say is better rights for migrants uh, it doesn't mean that it's an obstacle for development. Sometimes it actually supports development. In fact, most of the time, if not, if not, if not all the time, it supports development. So it's, uh, it's very important to, to see it as part and parcel of development. And this is when we speak about, about human rights as well. Human rights are really, I mean, if you, if you look at it and specifically human rights of, of migrants here, um, they are enshrined in all the sustainable development goals that all member states have already um, have committed to to deliver by 2030. This is uh, and and it, we don't speak about it as a separate uh, as a separate uh, siloed uh, uh, objective. It is enshrined in every SDG that we have committed to, and it's uh, it's finding the right balance to be able to. Uh, transition and introduce those uh, very key rights as you as you move forward. Um, I'm conscious of time, so I don't want to uh, to speak uh, 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 and take time from from the Q and A session, which I'm sure is going to be very interesting uh, in the in the in the next uh, segment. Uh, but I want to speak finally about something, and my colleague Dr. Ninette also mentioned it. I want to speak about social protection. Um, Social protection has been difficult to define uh, the impact of it uh, um, during the, the uh, periods before, but, but what I'm saying is that we actually have a very clear opportunity now. This is one of the very few blessings that COVID has brought us, is that it was a litmus test to see how effective our social protection systems are. Um, and uh, and uh, God forbid we don't want any more litmus tests, so that's for sure. But uh, let us please, uh, I mean, it's, it's of utmost urgency to capitalize on assessing um, uh, where those social protections have, uh, have been very strong, where they have worked, where have they been challenging, and how can we work together to do it. Social protection is not a responsibility of the host government or, uh, only. This is also a partnership between countries of origin and destination. There's so many different aspects and approaches in which governments of countries of origin and destination can work together to address um, or uh, ensure social protection measures are there specifically for migrant workers. Um, it's an opportunity. Let us use it to really um, build back better as we have uh, as we have all committed under uh, under different platforms. So with this with this note, I want to thank you again for your kind invitation and congratulate all three governments. I mean, uh, for for the fantastic work and progress that has uh, that has taken place. And we 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 will continue. I know I speak uh, on behalf of my colleague Dr. Nanette as well when I say that we will continue to be there. Uh, as IOM, um, uh, as part of the UN system, to support you in uh, in progressing with those very key initiatives, um, and uh, and uh, and we very much look forward to our dialogue and engagement. Thank you very much, and wishing you all a fantastic day. I thank Mr. El Sarkani for his uh, presentation and also for joining us uh, despite the uh, time difference.
Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have uh, heard uh, uh, from our panelists, all of whom have given us uh, excellent presentations uh, regarding their rich experiences in labor migration and labor uh, migration matters, and they've shared with us important developments in their respective countries, as well as important reforms which they have undertaken, including uh, in the traditional kafala system, all of which promote, protect, uh, and respect the human rights of migrants, as well as uphold the principles of the Global Compact for Migration. Ladies and gentlemen, we have about uh, 10 to 15 minutes left uh, in, our, um, in our event, and uh, I'd like to um, use this time to invite those here for any comments or interventions that they wish to make. And uh, I would like to request anyone here in the room who wishes to take the floor to please uh, indicate uh, by raising your hand and also to please introduce yourself. And uh, we will also be providing a microphone for whoever wishes to take the floor. So uh, I open the floor now for any interventions or comments on uh, the presentations made by our panelists or any point you wish to make. Yes, sir, you have the floor. If you could also uh, identify yourself. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency, for giving me the opportunity. Actually, I was intending here to listen, not to speak. I had nothing prepared in mind, but what I wanted to say is relevant to what I'm saying now, is that sometimes we need to stop and listen, stop and see what's happening around us. Usually when we get involved in these international meetings, we start talking, we prepare our long, uh, speeches and we start talking on the panels or we start talking on the uh, plenaries. But when we stop talking and we start listening to others and see the, the filled half of the cup, because as far as we're working to improve, as far as we're working for a better life for migrants across the world, for workers across the world, then we're achieving something. We don't say that we'll be perfect. But each step counts. Uh, what Zarqani said about working in silos. If we work in silos, if we work in closed rooms and set as much policies as we want to set, or remove as much barriers as we, much we want to remove, we will not reach anywhere. So I'd like to thank you again for putting all, us all together in this room to listen to what Saudi Arabia, what Bahrain has done, what the Philippines has to say, what international organizations has to also uh, to give us and uh, to provide us as information and we would call for more uh, more of these meetings to share best practices and to share our experience and learn from each other because we're always in the same world and we're talking about the same topic i will not take more thank you very much Any other uh, requests? Yes, please. And if you could also uh, identify yourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for such a <laughs> informative um, presentation. I think I agree with him. It was great to listen. I'm from Bangladesh. I'm Mahreen Khan. I'm representing Khan Foundation, which is a human rights organization. I'm also a migration researcher. I think the um, Philippines can provide important lessons for other mig huge li migrant sending countries such as Bangladesh about how to inform workers of their rights. I think if you talk to migrant workers in Bangladesh, which I have done, um, many of them talk about themselves relative to their other counterparts, other migrant workers at the destination countries. And they often talk about how Filipino workers know their rights, they're able to better protect themselves and uh, fight for their wages, which oftentimes Bangladeshi workers cannot. So I wonder if, um, especially in the region, Philippines uh, government can take some lead in, in help working with other migrant sending countries um, to kind of inform them of, of these uh, lessons and learnings and how to also uh, establish such a, um, uh, a trend and, and practice in these countries. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I do not under Secretary Ariola would like to respond briefly to that. 
Um, thank you very much for the question. My understand, I, I think our, our post in uh, in Saudi Arabia and Bahrain are also here. They're listening to us. But I understand um, the our ambassador in Saudi Arabia has already been touching base with other countries of origin, and they've been working together. I think with um, Under Secretary Al Harbi uh, in trying to uh, um, move further the labor reform initiative. Of course. Uh, the Philippines stands ready to assist and uh, to cooperate and uh, to collaborate with any country of origin and destination um, to, to be able to push this reform. Um, we, in 2018, we, were not, we did not know that this is going to be this good. Um, we are very uh, happy that we, um, before, during that time, we were only talking to, to, uh, to Bahrain. But now, of course, uh, Saudi Arabia is here. Of course, UAE is there also. And we're looking forward to, to continually working with the countries of destination and perhaps the whole GCC in this endeavor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I think we have a lot of uh, speakers uh, <clears throat> wishing to take the floor, but I want to say that we only have about 10 minutes. So, so, uh, and uh, we also have a number of uh, interveners who wish to participate from Zoom. So, perhaps to be fair, I'll um, I'll give the the next uh, I'll give the floor to the next two Zoom speakers on Zoom, and then revert back to those in the floor. Uh, we only have 10 more minutes, so maybe I'll be try and request all those who take the floor to speak not more than two minutes. So now uh, I'd like to give the floor to Ms. Teresa Notado from the Filipino Nurses Society in Saudi Arabia, who, is, who will be joining us here speaking from uh, on Zoom. You have the floor. Could you? Uh, yes, yeah. good evening. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, um, everybody. And uh, I'm Maria Teresa Notado. Actually, I'm a teacher, and I'm the president of one of the Philcom groups here in Saudi Arabia, specifically the central region, which is Kasim area. Um, it is such a great, um, it's great news for us to have this. When I learned about this as the president of CAFICOM, we were really excited to have this forum, sir, because as you can see, being the president and being a Philcom, uh, one of the Philcom groups um, here in Saudi Arabia, we have seen firsthand the problems that um, our Filipino workers, the migrant workers has here. And uh, since March of 2021, especially with the CAFALA system, it has been going on and on with all of these um, issues and things. And with this, joining hands with, of course, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia and Bahrain, it shows, up, shows, shows us, you know, that there is that protection with migrant workers, which these OFWs need because they leave their own country and leave their families behind to be able to, to serve, uh, to, to give them a better life. However, sometimes because of the things that were not um, there yet before, then a lot of them are in trouble here. So we would really like to thank everyone for this. And also, it only um, having, as um, one of the speakers, Mr. Mohammed said a while ago, um, obstacles are not something which are, neg uh, are uh, basically negative. It actually strengthens both the workers and the employers, and it only strengthens the relationship with the Philippine government and that of Saudi Arabia as well. And so, um, and thank you so much to the Philippine government. I would really like to extend that grateful appreciation because this forum that you have given, specifically for the migrant workers, only proved to say that the Filipinos are the unsung heroes that we have and are really, um, uh, uh, we have worth. And you see, you want to protect us to the much, uh, to, as much as you can for um, for their work and for their life here in a different country. So again, thank you very much. And I hope that we will see more of this coming in soon so we can also share it to our Filipino community here in Kasim region. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your uh, remarks. And now I wish to give the floor to Mr. Uh, Rick Advincula of the Filipino Club of Bahrain. from the Kingdom of Bahrain. Uh, my name is Rick uh, Advincula. I'm, I'm the president of the Filipino Club. 
the only Filipino NGO duly recognized by the Bahrain government. Thank you for the opportunity to participate here with all of you. On behalf of the Filipino club and the entire Filipino community in the Kingdom of Bahrain, I would like to express our gratitude to the royal family and the government of Bahrain, to the reforms it has made so far, and to name a few of the long list, um, the mobility of expatriates, the flexi visas for those previously illegal, and the COVID response it has provided to its citizens and residents that is non-discriminatory. And lastly, for providing a comfortable life to all the people here in the Kingdom of Bahrain. I will not take so much of your time and uh, thank you very much and congratulations to all of you. Thank you very much. Uh, we still have about five more minutes, so I now will uh, give, open the floor to those here in the room. I, yes, please, if you could also identify yourself. Yes, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Joanna Concepcion. I'm the chairperson of uh, Migrante International, and we are a grassroots uh, organization of Filipino migrants. I am also joined by my sisters from Indonesia and Malaysia, um, uh, and we know that many of our migrant women in Asia uh, work uh, in the Gulf states. So we thank you for organizing this important uh, side event, and we hope that uh, the governments present here today will uh, also have uh, uh, dialogues with other uh, governments in, in uh, Asia who are not present. Um, we hope and uh, we appeal um, to the governments present today to, uh, we hope that um, we can uh, involve more uh, grassroots participation of uh, migrants in shaping uh, evaluating and analyzing the action plans. There are many commitments that were mentioned today uh, that we are uh, hopeful uh, that will really be uh, that will really be taken action on. And we hope that our grassroots migrants can have a voice uh, and space um, uh, to be able to dialogue uh, regularly on a regular basis um, with our government agencies so that we can share how um, the migrants are impacted on the ground. So we thank you for talking about um, addressing labor exploitation um, and we hope that uh, our migrant workers, thousands of them um, in the Gulf states uh, are, have experienced, as uh, has already been mentioned, uh, uh, severe labor exploitation. They return back to their homelands um, and billions uh, of worth of unpaid wages are not given to them uh, up until now. Many years have been waiting. So we hope that there would be a swift resolution uh, of their cases and more access to legal support and access to justice for their cases. And lastly, um, uh, we highlight and underscore our uh, women rights, uh, migrant women rights organizations in Asia Pacific region would like to really highlight the crisis uh, facing our migrant women domestic workers uh, in the Middle East. And uh, many of them have really uh, faced severe human rights abuses. And we hope that uh, a majority of them are, are household workers um, that find themselves in really severe situations. So we hope that there would be more uh, uh, support uh, uh, provided uh, and assistance provided for them. And lastly, any discussion, uh, we hope that any discussion about ethical recruitment uh, of uh, migrant workers would not mean uh, deregulation uh, of uh, private recruitment agencies. So we, we hope that there would be stronger uh, enforcement and regulation uh, in the recruitment uh, process of migrant workers. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much um, for that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, um, we're rapidly uh, reaching our uh, time limit. We can only use this room for about uh, less than one minute. So let me um, then, uh, if you don't mind, I'll just have to wrap up. My apologies also to the those who wish to take the floor uh, from Zoom, but I hope you understand. Maybe if we had another 30 minutes, we could have had a lot more speakers, but they wouldn't let us. Anyway, so with that, uh, of course, we've come to the end of what I feel was a very productive discussion. And then in that regard, I want to thank all the panelists for their very insightful remarks. I think uh, this meeting has proved to be very useful, uh, not only for the presentations and, and what we've learned, but also for taking progress of what has been achieved so far and the lessons learned. And I want to thank all of those who participated, um, the panelists and those who took the floor, uh, both in person and online. And I wish to uh, wish everyone a successful IMRF. Thank you very much. Thank you.